are listening to the 90 Days Later podcast with Anna Charles, episode 142. Welcome to the 90 Days Later podcast, where I show you how life with less alcohol is more fun than you think. I work with high achievers who struggle to drink a glass of wine without it turning into two bottles. I'm the one they call when they want to take it or leave it. So if you want to change your relationship with alcohol that doesn't involve counting days sober, you're in the right place. Hi all and welcome back to the podcast. Hope all is going well. There's a lot happening in my world at the moment and including this week actually I'm going to be presenting to the wonderful Moderation Management Organization's kickstart program so looking forward to doing that i think that's on wednesday so lots of fun anyhow welcome to the podcast and this week what i want to do is actually want to continue in the theme of myths now last week as you may remember i spoke about a myth about motivation so i'd like to continue on that sort of theme and one myth that I think gets in the way of so many of us right, of taking action actually across all of our lives is what I'm going to call the readiness myth. So what does the readiness myth mean and what is readiness? Well, I think you could say it means the state of being fully prepared for something, whatever that is. Now, that sounds really sensible, right? It really sounds like, yeah, of course you want to be ready. You want to be ready for an exam. You want to be ready for a trip. You want to be ready for all sorts of things that we're going to get ourselves ready and then we will take action. And that on the flip side, if we don't have that state of readiness, then that means that we are not ready to take action, right? That's kind of like the logical conclusion, But I'm going to explore today how there really is no such thing as readiness, at least in a way that serves us, right? This feeling that when you sit down to do the thing, maybe take your driving test. I do remember that, even though it was many, many moons ago. Like the question, do I really feel ready for this? And when I think back across so much of my life and most keenly when we had our first child, our first son, was I ready? Well, I'd obviously had some time, I had nine months, right, to think about it and I had been married, we had been married for a couple of years prior, but was I really ready to do it, to be a mother and, you know, have have a, a child in my life with all the other, you know, my life was very busy at the time? Probably not. In fact, I remember at the same time I had a colleague and she fell pregnant just around the same time as me. And she and her husband had been planning on a child for a while. Um, So you could argue that she was maybe more ready than I was, right? Because we were like, oh, right, we're having a baby soon. Oh, that's exciting. But if I were to ask my friend, my colleague back at the time, if she felt really ready, I bet she didn't. Right, even though this was really something that honestly they've been planning for in all the different ways, probably still would have said, Yeah, actually not not gonna feel ready for this. The point is that it doesn't really matter how much preparation you do. Side note, of course, I think, you know, there are limits to this. There is some prep that we can all do. I still don't think that we're truly ready for something until we're actually in it. When we really learn in the situation, it's almost a trial by fire to a greater or lesser extent. And certainly when it comes to something where we might have failed and failed and failed and failed before, such as changing our relationship with alcohol, you know, would we ever really feel ready to have to give it another go? Right. Because that that takes that takes quite a lot of emotion to be ready to do that. So as I speak about this, I want you to take on board that readiness is a feeling. It's not a state of preparation. And I think this is where we can really hold ourselves back, right? We have this attachment to needing to be ready. But the question we want to ask is why? Because you can have the perfect circumstances to be successful You can have it all managed, right, all laid out, and then we still feel really nervous. We still hesitate, and we're still going to find some reason why we aren't ready. 
I was talking about this with someone the other week. We'd done a discovery call. She was very keen. She you know, wants to make the change, wants to transform her relationship with alcohol, likes my work, very interested in working with me. And she said, well, she needs some time to think about it. Fair enough. Never going to push anyone into anything. That's a note for all of you. If you get on a discovery call with me, you know, it's totally no strings attached. Well, this person waited a couple of weeks and then she emailed me and we had some emails back and forth about it. She's obviously still thinking about this. And it came out that she didn't feel ready. And she was wondering, she wondered out loud, are there some people who never feel ready? And I think that that question hits it, the nail on the head so strongly because we can have all the reasons lined up and some people are going to take action and some people are not. And if you and it's all down to how you feel, right, how you propel yourself forward, because you see, I do discovery calls all the time with people. And remember, these are all people who are turning to me for help to change their relationship with alcohol. They don't yet have the result right obviously which is why they look to me for help so these people are all going to be in varying stages of readiness and those who say they want to think about it are typically the ones who are finding all the reasons why they're not ready they might not be aware they're doing this but this is what their brain their brain is scanning for why you know this is not a good idea and listen listen i'm not picking on them if if you think you fall into this category this you know this isn't an assault on you we all do this i do this i see myself doing it and i do brain coaching all the time and i still must see myself doing it right we can be on the verge of making a decision that feels really big and usually one of the questions i ask is well am i ready for this you know are we ready for this whatever that thing is And then what we do is, right, we justify our actions of not feeling ready. Oh, I should wait till I have more time. Oh, I should wait till I have more money or until the holidays are over, until the kids are back at school, until I have more time in my diary, right, to focus on the coaching and to do the work. If I'm going to pay Anna, you know, I really want to make sure I'm ready for this. You know, we think I need more of this, that or whatever. So we kind of put in all these little reasons of if I had this thing, whatever it is, time or time, money, blah, 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 I would be ready, right? Like mine, if I had more hours back in the day, I would be, I would be ready for my driving test. But really, I can tell you that I for sure <laughs> would never have been ready for my driving test, right? I just never would. I just had to do it. Just like I would never have been ready, I am sure, to have a child, no, in that one, I got no choice about it. Once you're pregnant, that's it. You kind of go for it. So it's not about all this stuff, right? All these reasons that if you have more time, have more this, have more that, then you're going to be ready because you, then you're going to find more stuff and more reasons and more excuses that will come along in their place. We know why this is. I have talked about this a lot on the podcast. It's how we are designed, right? Our brains are designed to keep us safe and any kind of change is danger. So it feels like danger to go into a driving test. It feels like danger going into an exam. It feels like danger going into a new relationship. Remember those those nerves before you get married. You've said, yes, the wedding's tomorrow. Am I really ready, right? Those flat fluttering. It feels like danger to sign up with me to change a relationship with alcohol, Right? And if your brain is starting to feel danger and unsafe in these scenarios of change, guess what? It's going to shrink you back and try to keep you small and try to do that to keep you safe. It is not because you are broken or scared or scaredy cat or any of this. We're all the same. We have different levels of tolerance to the risk, but ultimately we all have this as part of our brains. And the way our brain tries to keep us safe is it by bringing up all of these big feelings, right? All of these big emotions, all this danger, all these warning signs that tells you you're not ready and that you can't handle it and that you're not capable yet. And I see this, even those of you, right? Even my clients who say yes on that call, and there are many of them, right? They, they, we have the, we have the phone call and say, yeah, I'm going to do this. If we dig in, they will often tell me of their reservations. They still feel reservations, right? They still have fears. They're uncertain, right? None of this, none of them feel ready. Like, yes, I'm ready. I'm going to smash it out of the park. I don't think I've ever had anybody say that. 
right? That really to never comes up. But they're still able to override what I might call, you know, this lack of readiness and take action. Now, before I talk about how they do that, the other thing I want to bring up here, and I, I because I see this myself, I think this is a this is a key thing when it comes to changing our relationships with alcohol, because when we're doing that, we're actually changing our lives. I talk about that a lot, but you actually don't see how big a transformation in life this can be until you're in it. But we do we do understand, right, at the base minimum, something's going to change here. And I think we tend to worry whether we really want the result, right? It's this kind of weird thing of this cognitive dissonance. And I remember this so, so, so clearly. I remember thinking, I do so much, I do so much want to drink less, right? I used to be very belligerent if I had too much to drink. I still want to not do this. But then I question, well, what does that really mean for my future life? And does that mean I'm eventually going to stop drinking, perhaps? Does that mean that I'm going to be the weirdo nursing the orange juice in the corner? Does this mean that my life is going to seem kind of less than? I talk about, you talk about dreary. I'm like, is it just going to seem dreary, right? I know I don't have, I don't want what I have right now, but do I really want that other change? I mean, really, am I going to be one of those people who just don't sort of do the wine thing? And when I was thinking that way, guess what? I felt sure that I didn't feel ready to take the action. Because even if I could have logically felt ready for the process of change, right? There's the steps, there's the action we take. And if I could have felt ready to back myself to do all the things, that was one thing. But was I ready for the end result that might happen, right? Not always. That was scary. I see this come up actually in coaching when people are really rocking and rolling. They're writing their plans and they're really you know, they're really doing the thing. And then we sort of might have some qualms about, well, do I really want this? Because then we start to get into, I really trust myself now. I can trust myself around alcohol, but what's that going to mean for me? As we start to see the curtains parting and that it's not so important to us, but it still feels it doesn't doesn't line up necessarily because we don't know really what it's going to be like to live a life like that. And so this is why I had to break it down for myself when I was in that situation, really into one step at a time, right? And that's what I do with my clients because I get that signing up to change a relationship with alcohol means that what does that mean about me and my relationship in the future with me and my relationships with other people, with my heavy drinking friends, with all the times when I celebrate with champagne, right? All those things, what's that gonna mean? Even if you can logically see that those times might be better, you're not really sure. So if that is you, my friend listening to this, if you're not sure whether you really want the end result, even though you do, I would say really just take it a step at a time. I say to people that I will help them achieve their ideal relationship with alcohol, right? When you coach with me, I do not have some underhand goal to get you into full sobriety, right? You know, I trust you to know what you want. And that's, you know, that's where we're going. It's my job to help you get there. But I will also offer, I see so often, that what my clients want from themselves changes over the course of the coaching, right? Once they start to see they can do this, actually, they can learn to drink less, right? Because that's a big fear. Am I really going to be able to do this, right? Really, I don't know if I can, I don't know if this is going to work for me. Once they start to see that that's possible and that they have the control and it, and by the way, it doesn't mean doom and gloom, then they start to ask whether they still want to have, you know, be able to drink at the weekend. So if some clients might say, I just still want to have a bottle of wine at the weekend, maybe on a Saturday, maybe on a Friday too. And then they start to think, hmm, is that really what I want? Because they see that it's going to be possible to change that, right? They start to feel curious about going for more things that maybe they weren't at the beginning of the process. These clients who decide to just sign up with me, even though they don't feel ready, they were the ones who were super brave, in fact. You know, they were afraid, but did it anyway. Now, I know you hear this a lot, right? Feel the fear and do it anyway. But I truly, by the way, think that's one of those things in the category of totally easier said than done. Because when you're afraid, when you're feeling that fear, does that make you feel expansive to take bold action? Maybe. But in my experience, it often does not. Even though it sounds good, right? It sounds good on the tin. It's like one of those little quotes. Feel the fear and do it anyway. 
But my clients who've created the success for themselves, who've taken the action when they felt afraid, and I again, I have found this for myself too, is that they knew that their results wouldn't come from readiness. They were clear on that. And side note, many of my clients have actually told me they've been looking at my website off and on for months. They've been listening to my podcast. Some have, you know, booked discovery calls, cancelled, then rebooked, right? We have all this fear. There's certainly fear there. What they do to get through that fear, I'm going to offer as an enabling feeling. The feeling they reach for when you feel afraid and you still want to take action is the willingness to show up in the willingness to try again. That's a huge one, right? When it comes to doing all the things, I've done all the things before, change how you drink. It's the willingness to make adjustments and figure it out. And in the willingness to do the work, in the willingness to write the drink plans, the willingness to go out to the bar and face the cravings instead of hiding at home, the willingness to ask for help, right? If you coach me, I encourage people, you you know, you get unlimited access to me between calls. Be willing to take me up on that, right? Get everything you can from me. It might be the willingness to go out and just order, go alcohol free and be judged by other people. The willingness to make a fool of yourself. The willingness to just fully go for it. That willingness is your magic ingredient because that will get you the result you so want. Readiness won't. Because if you feel ready for something, if you feel absolutely fully, truly and prepared, I think you've probably waited too long. Because listen, we don't grow in our comfort zone. So if you're waiting to feel fully comfortable and fully safe and fully ready, that is an indication you're not growing. That's an indication you're missing the moment. So the readiness myth is something it's time to let go of, or at least I offer to you the decision you can make today to let go of that. And say together with me, I don't need to feel ready in order to get results. That's a wonderful thought to write down, by the way. I don't need to feel ready in order to get results. What I need is to be willing to go for it and to keep trying and just do my best. I need to be willing to seek help and take the action. And that is and will always be enough. So if you're listening to this and you've been dreaming of being able to go out at the weekend and just have a glass or two of wine without taking over your life, right, without you creating plan sort of planning your life around the wine hear that a lot I just don't want to do that anymore Anna instead of asking if you're ready to take the action ask are you willing to not feel ready are you willing to feel anxious and fearful and willing to take the action and then ask how that feels in your body really when I do this when I harness willingness over readiness every single time it feels a lot calmer to me so do this ask yourself these questions and then book that free discovery call with me. I will then give you the exact, and I mean exact, plan to get you to where you want to be. Working with me, you won't be alone. You won't be confused. You may not feel ready, but if you're just willing to go with it, willing to believe in yourself, as I believe in you, you will get your result. And you will look back And you will see that you probably likely never have felt ready, but you are now so grateful that your past self at least felt willing. You can book a spot on my calendar at 90dayslater.co. Just click on the book a call button at the top of the webpage or email me, Anna, at 90dayslater.co. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next week.